Diving into the numbers of a nine-game winning streak. The last three, Jason Tatum hasn't been himself, and they're still winning the games. Plus, Jalen Brown's assist binge over the last four games. It's all right now on the Locked On Celtics podcast. Be ever ready. Recognize the city of champs. Boston, baby, we do what you can. Locked on number 18, Tatum and Brown, J team. Step back, we gon' wet that and slay teams. Of course, the Celtics, who else could it be? Screaming like KG with the Larry OB. Corral is above average, assessing the team status. Best daily pod, no cap, salary matching. Clutch like Bird to DJ, keep John on replay. Primetime, dapping up the truth on the sideline. Rain and Jays, how it started, raising banners, how we finish. Locked on Celtics pod, home of the winners. B. Hey there, welcome back to the Lockdown Celtics podcast here on the Lockdown Podcast Network, where it is your team every day. And I'm here for you every day with a fresh, free podcast dropped directly to your device when you subscribe. You can also watch the show on YouTube. And I do thank you for making this show your first listen every day. I'm John Corrales, former professional basketball player. And now I cover the Celtics for Boston Sports Journal. I've written a book called The Boston Celtics All-Time All-Stars, which you can pick up Anywhere. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code locked on. That's prizepicks.com, promo code locked on. The Boston Celtics are on a nine game winning streak, nine games in a row. And uh, later on, I'll talk about how Jalen Brown's assist numbers have uh, really gone uh, through the roof in three of the last four games. In the second segment, we'll talk about how they're doing this, how they, they won the last few games, really without a lot of offensive help from Jason Tatum. But first, I wanted to get into some of the, the, the winning streak statistics that are really highlighting exactly how good the Celtics are. So over the last nine games, the Celtics have the league's best offensive rating in their 10th in defense, and they have the league's best net rating, which is 12.2. Offensive rating, the... the uh, amount of points per 100 possessions and the defensive rating is how much they give up in uh, per 100 possessions. And the net rating is the difference between the two. And so that's, that's how that's figured out. And so the Celtics defense has been, when you normalize everything has been pretty good in the last nine games. And the Celtics offense has just been humming along all season long. Uh, the fact that they have the league's best rating without having a top like, top five defense, you don't see that very often. Uh, they have the league's best assist-to-turnover ratio, which, obviously, they're moving the ball. They're not turning the ball over. They are holding the opponents to the 12th lowest field goal percentage. They are not fouling six fewest free throw attempts in the league by opponents over the last nine games, and they're they have the fewest, their opponents are over the last nine games have the fewest assists per game by any of any team's opponent. So add that all up. The Celtics are moving the ball, best assist to turnover ratio. They have the best offensive rating. Uh, they're putting up 120 plus points per 100 possessions. And that that's just a ton of points. It's just a ton of points. Uh they're not turning the ball over. They're protecting the ball. Uh, the second half of the uh, Pelicans game, notwithstanding, where they had 14 turnovers, that's that's the aberration. But they're generally not turning the ball over. They're defending well. They're not fouling, and their opponents aren't. Uh, well, if they're if their opponents aren't hitting shots, then that's going to depress their assists a little bit. But their opponents aren't moving the ball either. They're they're giving their opponents the types of shots that they want to give up defensively. Uh, they're not giving up a ton of three-pointers. Majority of the, the shots that the Celtics are giving up are two-pointers. Uh, the the three-pointers that they do give up, opponents are shooting at about 34%, so it's a little bit below league average. So the Celtics have done a good job holding teams uh, in check from the three-point line. Uh, that That is, has been helped by you know Atlanta being a terrible three-point shooting team, uh, a couple of other teams having some really bad shooting nights there. But the Celtics team is, is humming along. Great offense, good defense, and keep in mind, they did it a couple of games here without Marcus Smart. They've been doing all of this without Robert Williams. To have that level of defense kind of step up 
over the course of the last nine games, over the course of this winning streak, slowly they've been coming along. Slowly the defense has been coming along. And I think that's that's something where uh, we can be encouraged. It's something that I've been asking for for a while, saying let's let's get that defense to a point where it can stand on its own. And then when you bring back Robert Williams, that enhances what they're doing. Get get to a better spot where you're not getting the blow bys. Get to a better spot where you're defending without fouling. Rebound the ball, clear the rebounds, and and don't give up a ton of offensive boards. Where that tends to be demoralizing, and it tends to be you know you tend to foul in those situations because you turn around and you see a guy get the rebound and you try, try to swipe at it to get the ball back. Celtics have done a lot of a, a lot of good work there. They've gotten a bunch of steals. Uh, they're they're running in transition. Defending without fouling is, is a big, a, a big, uh, I think, development for this team. And when you look at what's coming up, Celtics are on a nine-game winning streak. And I'm not going to pretend like they're going to go on a 20-game winning streak here. At, at some point, the, the role has to end. But they're in Chicago. They have some uh, unfinished business in Chicago. That's the scene of their only regulation loss this season. And it's kind of wild that they've they've played... Uh, 16 games at this point. They've only lost one game in regulation. They have, I think, unfinished business in Chicago. I think they'll want to uh, take care of business there. I don't know if Marcus Smart will be back. He was questionable going into the Pelicans game. I saw him walking around. He seems to be fine, but you know the swelling is not where they want it to be with his right ankle. I think it's fine if he misses another game. I kind of asked Joe Missoula about it and and tried to see if I could sneak an answer out of him where he acknowledged how many other ailments that Marcus Smart was dealing with, and he didn't. But uh, I, I do think that Smart is benefiting a bit. You know, he had that oblique, that that thing that uh, he tweaked in uh, Toronto or actually in Montreal when he had that slip and fall. So anything that kind of helps get everything better that's fine. I, we did the podcast a week or two ago with Tom Westerholm where we said, hey, this is the time to get Marcus Smart some rest. And this is a great way to get him some rest. Malcolm Brogdon was back. He was rusty in the New Orleans game, but having him back is certainly helpful enough. And, and eventually here, Brogdon gets back to being himself. Rob, I think, is going to be back fairly soon this past Friday here was eight weeks so we're in the eight to 12 week window you know i've seen him kind of walking around he looks fine he's obviously been been working out uh he's talked about him being uh dunking and and you know i saw him i saw him in in shoot around like i didn't see him on the floor but we're all standing there in new orleans and rob comes in like kind of running in grabs a phone that he forgot and turn around and he was gone so I was like, okay, I, I mean, I'm not seeing anything on the floor yet, but this guy is moving pretty well off the floor. He was moving pretty quickly there. So I feel like he's getting close. I feel like he's getting close. I don't know if we're going to have to wait the full 12 weeks for him to get back. I don't know if he's going to be back soon. I don't know if he's going to be back during this homestand, but Chicago Monday night, and then they have a big homestand, Dallas, Sacramento, Washington, Charlotte, and Miami twice, all at home. Now, do I think it's going to be 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 wins in a row? I doubt it. I think somewhere in there they're going to lose. Uh, and they they may, who knows, maybe they, they lose a couple. But the way they've been playing, they have a chance to win all of these games. And to be at home and to to have an opportunity against, look, the competition, Dallas is is obviously a good team. Sacramento is the highest with Boston. Their offense is right neck and neck with Boston. So that's going to be a challenging game. These other games, I think Miami's kind of struggled a little bit. I, I do think there is an opportunity there for Boston to continue on a a monster, a monster streak. I mean, look at the Miami Heat there. They they've lost a couple in a row. They're seven and nine. Dallas is is a good team, but these other teams, Charlotte's terrible. Um They've got they've got a, a real chance. So they've done some of their damage without Jason Tatum, which should be a little scary, I think, to other teams. 
if if Jason Tatum is not his best and they're still winning, that's a problem for the rest of the competition. We'll talk about that next. First, today's show is brought to you by BetterHelp. Give online therapy a try at BetterHelp.com. Uh, I've talked about therapy a lot. I'm a big believer of uh, about ther- uh, you know when it comes to therapy. I think um, everybody everybody can benefit by uh, finding a good therapist. And even if you think, I don't know, I got it. It's 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 very easy for life challenges to kind of pile up, make you feel unsure about yourself. Uh, and that's when it comes to anything. If you've got a career change, a new relationship, if you're a parent, your know, life doesn't come with a user's manual. And so BetterHelp is, is real, uh, real therapy that can get you matched with a, uh, an, a therapist online that you can talk to on your schedule. You're not limited to the people who are in your area. Uh, it's something that can help you get through those tough times in life. No matter how big the challenge, no matter how small the challenge, you'd be surprised at how important uh, a good therapist is to getting you through things. BetterHelp has connected over 3 million people with licensed therapists. It's convenient, it's accessible everywhere, and it's 100% online. So there's no driving. You can just come home, you can get into a room by yourself, you can get onto your computer and you can talk to your therapist. It's, it's, a, really great, it's a really great way to, to get through these tough spots. I have, like I said, I preach it, I practice it, and I think you should too. Uh, as the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched over 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available online, 100% online, and it's affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with the therapist, and if things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist at any time. It couldn't be simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off uh, your first month at betterhelp.com slash NBA. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash NBA. Thanks for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. When you're done with this show, how about checking out Locked On Sports today? It's a great show across the league, across the sports world, and all the big stories in sports covered in just about 20 minutes. So you want to sound smart at the water cooler? Check out Locked On Sports today. Wherever you found this podcast, you'll find that one. Jason Tatum, over his last three games, has been, eh, okay. You know, he's done other things, but... Jason Tatum's last three games have not been particularly great. He's shot less than 40% in all three. He hasn't hit double-digit field goals made in any of them. He hasn't made more than three three three-pointers in any of those games. Uh, He went to the line 10 times against OKC, but then just four against Atlanta and six against the Pelicans, which is good. That's fine. But he has done other things. 10 rebounds, seven rebounds, seven rebounds. Uh, 10 assists in against... New Orleans eight again against Atlanta. He's he's found other ways to make an impact, but hey, Jason Tatum is a scorer, and the Celtics have the top offense in the league. And if you're getting 19, 19, 27 against OKC, but really low efficiency there, uh, to just get that to get 19 points in the last two games and still come through, you say, wow, that's that's really impressive. Well. How is it happening? The Celtics are just getting such great performances early on from Grant Williams. These are true shooting percentages I'm going to read you off. And this this should be, when you're up over 60, it's it's pretty good. Grant Williams at 75. Luke Cornett at 73.5. Sam Hauser, 72.3. True shooting percentages, by the way, incorporate your field goals, your three pointers, your free throws. It's it's just an overall shooting percentage. Al Horford sixty nine point nine, Derek White at sixty two point six. Then you get to Tatum and Brown, who are hovering right around sixty percent. The contributions that the Celtics are getting without these without Tatum are huge, and these are these guys are starting to learn. Uh, how to perform without Tatum uh, having to carry them. They're not sitting there looking and you know to to Jason Tatum and saying, "Hey, man, bail us out." When push comes to shove, 
in the fourth quarter and they need a they need a bucket. Jalen Brown is right there to have some really good performances uh, with uh, J- Jason Tatum kind of struggling from the field. Jalen Brown's last few games, 27, 22, 26. But that's still not what we're used to from these guys. They're, yeah, that's a, you know combining to get over 40 points. But the Celtics are putting up 100 plus, 110. You know, uh, what do they put up against the Pelicans? 117 against the Hawks, 126 against the Thunder, 126. So in these last few games where Tatum has not been scoring, the Celtics are still putting up monster, monster numbers. They don't have to rely on Tatum to be the takeover guy. And now I think that that's twofold how it helps the Celtics. One, obviously it helps the other guys kind of find their way and say, hey, Tatum is struggling. We've got to, we've got to be able to execute. And they're, they're putting forth performances that are really impressive. Derek White, Malcolm Brogdon at times. Like I said, Jalen Brown, obviously, uh, as the team's second star. Al Horford has been amazing shooting-wise. And you might they, they might be due for a regression. Uh, because those shooting numbers are, are so incredibly high, but they're generating these looks that are so good that even a regression is, is it shouldn't be a drastic one because they're wide open looks. The Celtics are generating wide open shots, wide open shots from three and wide open shots from three from their best shooters. Sam Hauser getting incredibly open looks. Grant Williams getting incredibly open looks. Derek White, who's shooting up over 40% from three, getting incredibly open looks. Horford, whose three-point shooting this year is, is through the roof. Incredibly open looks. These guys are just, it's, it's warm-up level shots. So the offense is clicking in a way where it doesn't need Tatum to drop 40. And the other half of this, the second part of the twofold is, Tatum can look around and say, they don't need me to drop 40. Now, if he's shooting well, he will. And then it's a wrap because if he's just hitting normal percentages, how are you going to stop that? The Celtics offense is unstoppable at that point. But he can sit there from the bench in the locker room and say, hey, man, I just dropped 19 points on crappy shooting and we still won this game. Still won it by double digits. It wasn't a pretty win, but you still ended up winning the game and pulling away in some of these games and putting up 120 plus points in some of these games. For Jason Tatum, that has to feel good. You sit there and you're like, this, I don't have to carry, I don't have to carry the load. And so in a playoff situation, in a situation where he's getting double teamed and triple teamed, he can feel good about giving the ball up. Because they've done it. They've proven that they can do it. The trust is there. There's a lot of talk about trust this weekend when we're talking to these guys in New Orleans. Lots of talk about trust. They trust each other. They've built this level of trust, which is what you want and what you have in a championship team. Championship teams trust each other. Tatum can now say, I trust all of these guys to go out there and hit these shots. When I give the ball up, they will hit these shots. And if they are, if the uh, closeouts are super aggressive, I also trust these guys to move the ball and get it. I can get it back. Tatum can still cut and be found on cuts. He can still get those easy baskets from time to time. So that makes the awesome offense just incredibly, incredibly scary. One of the byproducts of this is Jalen Brown going on assist binges like I haven't seen Jalen Brown go on before. Three out of his last four games have been incredible uh, assist numbers, and I will go over that next. First, let's talk about prize picks. Today's show is brought to you by Prize Picks Daily Fantasy uh, in an, a fun way that is not frustrating because you're going up against uh, experts with high-powered computers and they game the system. No. 
what it is you pick a player up to six players and you go up against the prize pricks projection you versus the over under do you think jason tatum is going to go over his projected points pick jason tatum pick the over and let's see maybe he'll break out of his slump you do that for a few different players you can even cross over sports there are a ton of sports when you go to prizepicks.com across the top there are tons of sports you can pick from all of them and you can combine these these picks if you beat the projections if you're right about the projections then you can win up to 10 times up to 25 times your money sorry up to 25 times your money on any entry again you against the projections not you against other people 60 seconds or less to make your entries super super easy and the best part is safe and fast withdrawals which you don't always get it's currently operational in over 30 states and canada college sports pro sports women's sports esports everything that you want it's there so download the prize picks app and go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports the first time users can get a 100 instant match up to 100 dollars with the promo code locked on if you deposit 100 prize picks will give you 100 if you deposit 50 prize picks will give you 50 don't forget to enter that promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match up to 100 dollars. thanks for making locked on celtics your first listen every day how about making locked on nba your second listen great show covering the league uh all the big stories across the league. I host on Wednesdays with Jake Madison from Lockdown Pelicans. If you missed that crossover show, by the way, with me and Jake, that was a fun one. Even, even though we're talking about a game you already saw, that was still a fun one. I think you should watch it. Uh, check out Lockdown NBA. It's a fun time. Wherever you get this podcast, it's also on YouTube. Jalen Brown, over his last four games, has been on a little bit of an assist binge. Now, let's let's throw out the game in Atlanta where he had zero. <laughs> he had seven against the Pelicans. He had six against OKC and eight against the Denver Nuggets. And you don't normally see Jalen Brown with that many assists. I mean, he's, he's usually getting a few, like three, four. Four assists is a good night for Jalen. Six, seven, and eight is an evolution in, in Jalen's game. It's, uh, I think, a recognition in, first of all, it, it goes along with what we're talking about with the offense, but the offense is humming and the offense is is really uh, showing you how it, it's moving and, and, and how these guys are, are, uh, in the right spots and in the right space. And spacing is something that came up a lot, has come up a lot over the course of the, the, the last few games. We're talking about Joe Mazzula. Uh, the, the, the reason why the Celtics have turnovers is when their spacing is off. The reason why the Celtics have um, issues when their spacing is off is there's no outlets. Jalen Brown is a great example of when there are outlets, those turnovers become assists. Jalen does have a habit of trying to do maybe a little too much, getting a little too deep into the offense and putting himself in a position where, oh crap, I'm turning, I'm jumping, and I am surrounded by three guys. I looked at the assists all, what is that? 21 assists over the last four games. There are probably a handful of those four or five where he jumps and says, Oh crap. And finds a guy out at the three point line and they become assists where a lot of times last season he's, you know, especially in the finals, he would jump and throw the ball and, there would be nothing, nobody, nowhere for that ball to go to. No outlets for him at all. The Celtics now have the outlets. The spacing is good. And, and Jalen kind of feels, I think, more comfortable in saying, I'm going to make my move. And if that move isn't there, I know that I've got shooters. Maybe the shooter's directly behind him. Maybe he's off in the corner. Maybe he's up, up in high opposite spot. But Jalen's been finding that guy. Jalen's also been finding guys on cuts. I think the wrong way to use Jalen is as the primary ball handler, which I think we saw uh, a lot in that Pelicans game. 
And that turned into, I think, maybe him trying to do too much. But when he comes off of a screen or when he gets the ball off a handoff and he gets the ball on the move, not just dribbling it up over half court, when he just gets the ball on the move and there's cutting behind uh, the defense, Jalen uses his gravity as a driver to find guys along the baseline. He's done that a few times. And then Jalen is just a killer in transition. He gets the ball. If you get the ball out on the move, like there's a difference between having him be the primary ball handler, walking it up and setting a half-court offense, which is fine every once in a while, but I still would rather have him coming off of a screen or something to get the ball on the move and then attack. I think it's just so much more effective that way. But on a kick ahead or as a grab and go, if if he gets the ball, if he gets a rebound in the middle of the lane, he just turns and goes. He's a killer. He's he's really good. He I think off the top of my head, four or five of the assists that he had in that in that binge here are in transition. Jalen is doing all of the things where he's looking up, he's seeing the floor. He's doing that better. He's breaking old habits. Uh, he's he's finding guys. Guys are cutting to give him the options. When the options are there, he will he will find those options, generally speaking. Every once in a while, he gets himself into some trouble, but the Celtics have created now an offense where the spacing is is good, and he can he can kind of bail himself out. He knows he has these places to go with the passes. And then the Celtics, when they get out and run, He's he's just fun out there. He I think he's he's grown so so much in transition as a, a on the wing as a guy who's who's uh, able to draw a defender in. He knows when to give it up. He knows how to give it up and get it back so we can get an alley oop. So that kind of stuff is is showing itself in Jalen Brown's assists. This this whole podcast has been a, like basically an ode to the Celtics offense and how it's it, it's it's become this kind of egalitarian offense that Brad Stevens has always wanted. And it's funny, I think he brought Ime Udoka in last year to bring in that Spurs like point three offense. The point three offense is you 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 have like. 0.3 seconds to catch it and make your decision. Quick decisions. You're either going to read the defense and dribble, pass, or shoot. But don't just sit there and jab step and, and you know mess around. Do something with it. And he may couldn't quite get that out of this team. Joe Mazzula is getting all of that out of this team. He has turned this team into the exact offense that Brad Stevens has been dying, dying to get in Boston. Match that up with a defense that is slowly getting better. And Robert Williams coming and Marcus Smart being fully healthy. They're already the best team in the league. <laughs> They're already the best team in the league. Where are they going to go from here? I'll wrap it up by saying that this is, it, it's just so encouraging. That 13 and three hasn't all been because Jason Tatum is shooting lights out. And it's not all because Jalen Brown is shooting the lights out. It's because other guys are shooting the lights out and because they're getting the open looks and Jalen is, is, is piling up assists at a rate that's, that's beyond what he's been usually doing. And Tatum's able to pile up the assists. Marcus Smart is able to pile up the assists. This offense is moving. It's humming. And it's it's getting production from everybody. It's not often where you have to go down lists, four or five players, to find Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown as leaders on an offense. But here we are. And I think it's... For, for that to be the case this early in the season... You'd think normally the Celtics with with some of these production, with some of these numbers that that Tatum has put up in recent games, that this would have been a losing streak, and they're winning these games. So it's super encouraging. It's super encouraging. I think we have a lot to look forward to. Season is 20% over. 
It's just about 20% over. Round it up, it's 20%. So one-fifth of the season is gone already. The other four-fifths, the other 80% has a real chance to be super, super special as if this isn't even special enough, right? I'll be here to talk about it all. Celtics play Chicago Monday night. Uh, I will have a post-game podcast after that. Monday through Friday is the schedule for this this, uh, podcast. Uh, Thanksgiving week. I haven't really made a decision if I'm going to podcast on Thanksgiving. Uh, We'll see if I'm still awake when it comes time to podcast. Uh, If I am, sure. Why not? I'll drop one for you. Uh, So make sure you're subscribed wherever you get your podcasts. Hope everybody has a a safe. You're traveling this week. Stay safe. And uh, I'll, I'll give you plenty of content that you can listen to, whether you're driving or flying. So make sure you're subscribed. You can watch the show on YouTube. And if you are subscribed, Uh, and you want to spread the word, hey, when you get to Thanksgiving dinner, tell your whole family that they should be listening to and watching the Lockdown Celtics podcast here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. Your team every day.